When you're getting started with self-publishing, there are a lot of things that you should definitely consider. And that one of them is that you're gonna look at the different distributors and the people who will help you make this process easy. The one we're going to explore today is Blurb. This is Chris Baird from self-publishing, madeeasynow.com, where self-publishing doesn't have to be so hard. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about Blurb self-publishing review, all you need to know. So let's get right on into it. What is Blurb? Well, an explanation of Blurb is history and, and its role in self-publishing industry. The first thing is we're gonna look at the exploration of Blurb. So Blurb is a self-publishing platform. It allows individuals to create, publish, and distribute their own books, magazines, and eBooks. So that's the starting point of it all, right? So it's a distribution, and it also helps you with the creation process involved in all of this in a very nice and easy way. Now with Blurb, users have access to user-friendly tools and templates to design and customize their publications, including, again, text, images, your layouts, as well as even your covers. And they offer affordable and accessible alternatives to traditional publishing, giving authors the opportunity to bring their own creative works to life as opposed to having somebody else do it for you, but then you lose a lot of that freedom. So the history of Blurb. The first thing is Blurb was founded in 2005 by Eileen Gittens, and she was a former Kodak executive who wanted to make it really easy for photographers in order to get their books out onto the market. So you could self-publish your own photo books. And usually, as, it, as you would imagine, Imagine, these would be high quality books. We're not looking at low quality paper and low quality printing, but really high quality. But over time, Blurb expanded its services to include a huge range of different types of publications, catering mostly to authors across various genres and disciplines, but not all. And we're going to hit that in a little bit. But Blurb's growth and success, it's made it one of the prominent players in the self-publishing industry today. So, uh, continuing on role, the role in self-publishing industry. So let's take a look at how it plays there. So the big thing is Blurb has revolutionized the self-publishing industry by empowering authors to control the entire publishing process. And that really makes it a lot simpler from the creation stage all the way to the distribution stage. And it's given inspiring authors and creatives the ability to showcase their work to a global audience without the need for the traditional publishing. And that gives you that advantage that we always talk about here on Self-Publishing Made Easy Now, that you're doing it yourself, so it makes it a lot simpler. And with Blurb, it has an intuitive interface and professional printing services, like we were mentioning with the photo books and such, and the global distribution network that makes it really easy to do a cost-effective and efficient for authors worldwide to get their books out and selling around the globe. So the types of books you can publish on Blurb. Well, a discussion of the range of formats available. Now I'm going to get through these. These are photo books. We're talking trade books, magazines, etc. Okay. Blurb offers a diverse range of formats. Like we were saying with the photo books and trade books and magazines, eBooks, including all of these other ones in order to meet no matter what your creative need is. And if you've been listening closely to me, I'm telling you, you should have it in all of the formats that are absolutely possible. And that's one reason why I like to suggest going with Juto for my formatting side. But today we are looking at blurbs as an option instead. So Photo books allow users to showcase their photography and create visually stunning narratives with customizable customizable layouts and high printing quality, which was sort of the entire main purpose. Whereas trade books, and one thing I I often get a question, which is what size should I, size of books should I use? I always recommend trade size because U.S. trade is six by nine. It maximizes your distribution, but it provides a platform for authors to publish their novels, memoirs poetry collection, and other written works using a lot of the different trim sizes, though I still recommend six by nine. You have cover designs as well as a lot of binding choices. Always allow distribution and what end customers really like to be the main driver of any choice that you're making. Also look closely at your competition and see what exactly they're doing. So how to use Blurb's tools for self-publishing. And we're going to look at a detailed overview of Blurb's BookRite and Adobe InDesign plugin. So the first thing is BookRite. And BookRite, it's Blurb's user-friendly software that enables authors to design and customize their books with ease. Now, I, again, use Juto. That's one of the reasons that you can find it below in the description. I have my 
uh, formatting course for authors just to keep it really, really simple uh, and, and easy. All of the tools, of course, require a bit of learning. But with BookRite, it provides a range of pre-designed templates, fonts, and layouts to choose from, making the book creation pro uh, process accessible for beginners, which is what an awful lot of authors are coming from. Really don't know much about anything, and so some of the drag and drop features are really helpful. And that's one of the big things that BookRite offers. It gives you these editing tools, the drag and drop, like I was saying, and image manipulation options, allowing authors to create these professional looking books without extensive design experience. And that's one of the reasons why you really don't want to just jump into uh, some of the more advanced tools like Photoshop and things and try. If you haven't learned those tools, it becomes too much, you're going to lose your motivation. But what about Adobe InDesign plugin? So Blurb's Adobe InDesign plugin, it allows users to design the layouts of their books directly within Adobe InDesign software. And that means that if you already are familiar with the software, like some of my clients are, you can just use it if you decide to go the Blurb route. And it seamlessly integrates those two tools together, making it possible exactly to fit Blurb's book specifications, templates, and printing options to make sure that your book is ready, print on demand, ready to go right into Blurb from Adobe InDesign. And it streamlines the production process by facilitating efficient collaboration between authors, editors, and designers using this really powerful tools of Adobe InDesign, but then also allowing you to harness the network and a lot of the publishing tools and marketing tools that we find inside of Blurb, okay? So step-by-step -step guide to using these tools. So using BookRite, what are you gonna do? You're gonna start by download downloading and installing the BookRite software from Blurb's website. So there's your first one. Then you're going to open BookRite and choose a book size and format for your project. And I recommend going by six by nine. So just so you know, it. <laughs> select a template and start with a blank canvas, then customize your book by adding text, images, and other design elements. Now you can do your book in Word and then just transfer it over. And that's also what I suggest doing with Juto. Though personally, I actually prefer Google Docs as my starting point for a lot of this stuff. And then we move it over to the secondary tools. And you're gonna use the built-in tools to format and edit your content, including adjusting font styles, layouts, and the image placement. Then you're gonna move on by previewing your book to ensure that everything looks as intended and make any necessary revisions. And that would be true no matter which tool you're using. A lot of authors think that you can just put it in there and then hit publish and don't bother to review it. And that would be a huge mistake. So you want to see if there's any issues because you can always go back and fix them if you can discover them early enough in the process as opposed to uploading it and getting Amazon or these other sites like Blurb rejecting it before you put it out or even worse, customers reading your book and seeing design and formatting issues and then giving you one stars as a result. When you're satisfied with your book, you can follow the prompts to upload your project to Blurb's platform for printing and distribution, okay? Uh, using Adobe InDesign plugin. So let's take a look at the steps. You're gonna uninstall the Blurbs plugin for Adobe InDesign. So you're gonna first gonna install it into Adobe InDesign for Blurbs website and ensure you have Adobe InDesign software. Now that is pretty obvious, right? Since that's the whole point of this particular exercise is using the software you already have. So hopefully you've already got it. If you don't already have it, then I would suggest using the other piece of software. Next, you're gonna open Adobe InDesign and access Blurbs plugin within the software. You're gonna select the book size, remember six by nine is one I recommend, and choose from Blurb's available templates to create a custom layout. Then you're gonna design your book by adding and arranging the text and different elements using the tools and features provided by Adobe InDesign. You're gonna utilize the Blurb plugin access printing specifications and adjust the settings and review your book's appearance. Like always, please do us all a favor and take a close look at your book before you just hit submit to a whatever platform you're choosing to put it on. And then once your design is complete, follow the instructions just to export your project and upload it into Blurb for printing and distribution. So it makes it really simple. So if you already know InDesign, then that is definitely the route you're gonna wanna go. So the cost of self-publishing with Blurb. I'm gonna give you an explanation of how pricing works on Blurb, including printing and shipping costs. So Blurb's pricing for self-published books, it's based on various factors such as the book format, the size, the page count, the paper type, and any additional features or upgrades. Be very careful about choosing things that are gonna increase the price because if your price gets too high, it's gonna be more difficult to sell the book. Sometimes it's best to choose lower quality options on a lot of these things because your readers aren't gonna complain about that, but they may not buy the book in the first place if your price is too high, 
okay? When creating a book on Blurb, the platform provides a pricing calculator that dynamically adjusts the cost based on the chosen specifications, which surprise, surprise, is the same that Amazon and the other sites do. As you make the adjustments, they'll give you an idea of exactly how much it's going to cost. In addition to the printing costs and shipping, the shipping method and order quantity, uh, quantity, Blurb offers different shipping options to accommodate various needs and budgets. Again, I would really recommend always keeping the budget cost as low as possible and giving your readers the maximum flexibility to order the book in whichever format. And if they want it super fancy, then they should be able to get that as well. So how to sell your book on Blurb. I'm going to give you some explanation, explanation of Blurb's online bookstore and how to list your book. So Blurb's online bookstore, it provides authors with a platform to showcase and sell their self-published books to a global audience because there are people all over the planet who are buying off this platform. To list your book on Blurb's online bookstore, you're going to need to create an account on Blurb's website and publish your book through their platform. And we already discussed a little bit upon the basics of that. Once your book is published, you can choose to make it available for sale on the Blurb bookstore set your desired pricing, and select the royalties you would like to earn for each sale. I recommend on the paperbacks to be making about $5 in royalties as your base price. If you screw this up, it's going to be very hard for you to do advertising and the other things you're going to need to do in order to get the sales you're going to, levels you're going to need to keep yourself motivated and also have the money to do the marketing process and give you what the energy you're going to need for your next book. So let's go into a discussion of Blurb's distribution options, Amazon, Ingram, etc. So Blurb offers distribution options that allow authors to expand the reach of their self-published books beyond the Blurb bookstore. One distribution option in the Blurb's integration with Amazon, it enables authors to make their books available for purchase on Amazon's marketplace, reaching a wide customer base. Now, I personally prefer Ingram Spark, which is my personal preference, but Blurb is also a definite option. And look, you can do it on Blurb, use all of their fancy tools, and then push the book right out to Amazon. In addition, additionally, Blurb provides distribution through Ingram, a leading book distributor, which allows authors to make their books available by order by bookstores, libraries, and other retailers, which is one of the reasons also I would recommend using ISBNs that you're going to be getting from your own ISBNs if you're going through the Blurb route so that you can make sure that certain bookstores aren't going to prevent you from publishing on their platform because they say it was some like Amazon or somebody else's. They usually won't discriminate against the other platforms, but Amazon sometimes can have some issues when you go in this particular direction. Okay, if you're using their free ISPNs. So pros and cons of using Blurb for self-publishing. I'm going to go into a detailed discussion of the benefits of using Blurb. Creative freedom. So the first thing is it gives you absolute flexibility on all sorts of things. The look, the feel, the size, the shape of all of your books. This is going to come through really, really nice. You're going to have exactly the things. You have a vision in your mind of what you want your book to look like. And there's no reason at all you can't exactly get it like that using Blurb. Professional quality. Like we said, the whole thing started as putting photo books out. They want really high standards, which is a really fantastic reason that Blurb may be right for you to make sure that the quality of the books that you're putting on the market are going to be amazing. Then you have distribution and marketing. And Blurb not only helps users create the books, but it also will help you distribute it and market it as well as pushing it through all of these other platforms. And they have other tools and resources for marketing and promotion, helping authors and creators reach a wider audience, maximizing the visibility and sales potential of their books, which is a really good reason to consider this, okay? Now let's talk, let's discuss uh, the potential drawbacks or limitations. The first is cost. Using Blurb, it comes in a lot more pricey than you would have if you were going with Amazon or just Ingram Spark. So you really need to consider whether or not that is something you want. The next is the learning curve. These tools aren't exactly perfectly easy to learn. So it is going to require some investment. But then again, I teach Juto and a, and a number of other tools. And this one is just another tool. So it is going to require some learning. If you have the idea that self-publishing is just an easy process for which you really don't have to learn anything, you're probably doing the wrong thing. You should try something else, though I'm not sure what else other hobby you might try or business you might try because every one of these requires some learning. So I would suggest doing that. Also just hiring a coach. That's one of the reasons I work with clients. We go back and forth. They show you how to use different tools in order to make sure your books are self-published and selling. 
okay? You're going to go for, they have limited genre and market reach, and that's maybe the biggest drawback in my opinion. That's the reason why I always push Amazon first, then Ingram Spark, and then Lulu. But Blurb may be the right choice for you, but their reach is limited and depends upon the genre that you're in because they do not do equally well on all genres. Some, they do better than others. So, success stories and case studies. I'm going to give you some examples of authors who have successfully used Blurb to self-publish. The first is Rupi Kaur, and he's a renowned poet and author. He self-published, she self-published her uh, debut collection, Milk and Honey, using Blurb, and it gained massive attention, becoming a bestseller and showing the power of Blurb, really getting that reach. The next is Todd Selby, and this is a photographer and author. Remember, I told you photography is an amazing one here. To self-publish his book, The Selby is in your place. It's a visually stunning book featuring, again, photographs and interviews with creative individuals in their unique living spaces. And this is, again, high quality paper, high quality printers. This is what you can expect of Blurb, oh, right? Then you have uh, Vivian Meyer, and it's a street photographer whose remarkable works gained recognition uh, posthumously. Uh, and she had her photographs compiled into a book, Vivian Meyer, street photographer, using Blurb's self-publishing platform. So it just goes to show, because the book showcased her extraordinary talent and contributed to a widespread appreciation of her photography, not to mention Blurb, making Blurb putting it on the map a bit. Because as each of these major best-selling authors is putting their high-quality self-published books using the Blurb platform, it establishes this is a serious actor when it comes to self-publishing that is definitely worth considering. So when you're looking at your book, in conclusion, you're going to want to make sure that maybe Blurb is right for you. I like to go through the different options, even though I don't personally use Blurb. I think it's very powerful to take a look, do a deep dive into these solutions and see if it happens to be right for you. Don't just dismiss it because nobody talks about it as much. You definitely should take the time research these tools and make sure that this, in fact, may be the tool that's right for you based upon, in particular, the, the drag and drop solutions, everything integrated, the InDesign options with Adobe, all sorts of positives that you're getting from this particular process. But the key is, at the end of the day, is you don't want to make yourself, make your world a nightmare when you're getting self-publishing. You need to break it down into very, very simple steps like you find on Blurb. Or if you want to see my recommendations exactly step by step, you should check out below in the description and grab there my self-publishing secrets checklist, which is going to tell you everything you need to know about how to get self-published and get everything up and going with your book. And check up above me here for more video answers to your self-publishing questions. Thanks.